Ahoy mateys! My name is Cullen, and this is my 1978 Chris Craft Corinthian. I live on this boat. I was digging through my hard drive and I found two half-finished videos from back in November, both covering pretty big projects that I just never got around to finishing for one reason or another. The first one is installing an anchor, chain, and a roller onto the pulpit of my boat and with the intention of eventually installing a electric windlass too. But just the anchor, the chain, and the roller was enough of a project for a single video. Uh, so that's gonna be the first thing we look at. The second thing is going to be completely refinishing the main door of my cabin, which has been neglected for decades, and this thing really needed a complete refurb. So I don't know a whole lot about that, like wood refinishing and carpentry and stuff like that. I know enough to get by, but I learned a lot on this project. So, let's start with this anchor chain thing. Let's get it done. Got it. Halfway across. I really felt like it was a coin toss whether or not it was gonna make it. That thing's heavy. 150 feet of chain. Wow. That. Plus this. Ought to keep things in place, don't you think? You can't even find the end. What if there is no end? Oh. Got it. If this is a real bit scenario, that would be near certain death. You're probably wondering why I just did that. It's to make sure there's no tangles, kinks, and that there actually is just one continuous strand of chain. Because if you can imagine, if I just trusted this is one single piece of chain, attached it to that anchor, and the other end to the boat, First time I let it out, shunk, there goes my anchor and half my chain. But now I know, this chain is one continuous piece. So we've got 150 feet of galvanized quarter inch chain with a Lumar Delta anchor. This is not stainless steel, but it is fine for what I'm doing. It's got lead inside of it and it's gonna be plenty strong enough. And I wanted to take that label off. You don't have to, but I like the, the clean look better. I just wiped it down with alcohol to get the residue off. Then I'm measuring out the end of the chain in 10 foot segments so I can mark them from 30 feet, 20 feet, and 10 feet with red marks so I know exactly how far I am from the end of the chain. And there was one part that needed to be filed down to fit around the chain. That is technically a plunge cut. It is ugly as sin, but hey, it fits that little washer piece and these nuts without any out the bottom, which is exactly what I need. So this part just kind of anchors into something solid and holds the chain in place. We've got the chain all the way connected to the boat now. And when it came to actually installing the roller on the pulpit, I knew I needed to turn the boat around in its slip to be facing forward so I'd have someplace solid to work on when I'm cutting holes and installing things. There's Mad Hatteras. I think they're coming to say hello. We're just chilling in the middle of the Ortega right now. Hey guys! How are y'all doing? There is a beautiful boat. It's called Lock and Tackle. I don't know if it's going for the same entrance that I am. Looks like it is not. I don't know. I'm just gonna let it pass, do its thing. Had to put down the camera to deal with uh, the traffic jam real quick, but we are back and we've got a very clear opening, so let's do this thing and pulling in, this is 20 times normal speed, but yeah, you can see it's almost like robotic movements on the boat, it's pretty neat. Look at that, that almost looks fake after seeing it back in so much. But this will be perfect for mounting that roller on the pulpit 
because I'll be able to reach right up underneath. It's gonna be great. So I've got to figure out where I want to put this bow roller. Obviously, the further out of the pulpit I put it, the longer the moment arm, so when the anchor pulls, it's gonna pull these bolts with more force if you get further out toward the tip. So I want to keep it closer to the main hull of the boat. Uh, but I also need to make sure that the anchor, when it hangs through, uh, I want to make sure that this does not bump up against the hull of the boat. There are 11 bolts already in here, so if I could reuse some of these, that would be great. The pattern on the roller is two in the back, one in the front. Um, so, unfortunately, we can't put the very back right here because that requires two holes and there's only one. But we can put two holes here and reuse this hole as one of the mounting points for the, uh, the bow roller, hopefully. I've unscrewed all the nuts from underneath this bolt and I've bumped it up with a hammer just enough to get underneath it. So let's pry this thing up. Okay, that's good. There is a little bit of a square key at the end of this bolt. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to file out that key in the... Man, that's gonna take a while. I need to file out that key. But once it's in, it's gonna work great. In the meantime, I can mark where this uh, goes and I can start cutting out my hole in the boat itself. That's what I'm really nervous about, is starting to cut holes in the boat. But this is not a structural part of the hull itself, so I'm not gonna sink the boat, obviously, by cutting through the pulpit. I just wanna make it look as nice as possible, and I don't wanna mess up. So I'm gonna measure quite a bit, and only cut once. And there's Mad Hatteras. She's back from her cruise, pulling into the slip. Nice. All right, I've drilled a hole. Goes all the way through. And the blade is long enough to go through. Let's do this. Yeah, that is densely packed fiberboard, obviously sandwiched between two layers of quite thick fiberglass. This is a thick thing. Oh, damn. So close. These little flanges come out too far, and it's definitely too thick to get those underneath where they belong. Turns out there's so much material between here and the inside of the boat that my four inch long stainless bolts are just not enough. So these bolts have to go through the pulpit, through the deck, and through the plywood backing on the other side. That's a heck of a lot of material, and I didn't realize how much it was. So I had to go out, I had to get a longer drill bit, which once you start getting stuff to this size, it gets expensive. That's like 12 bucks. And the longest bolts I could get are six inches long. These are six dollars each. I really, really, really hope that they go all the way through, because if they don't, I'm out of luck. All right, I gotta go check to see if these bolts came through. Oh man. Ugh. They're just barely poking through. Why does it have to be so thick? That's good. That means it's going to be strong. 
how do I get bolts longer than six inches? I'm not. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to cut up into the um, the plywood backing a little bit. I'm gonna have to get a spade bit and just just enough room so I can put a washer and a nut in there while being inside of this little cave. But at least they're coming through this time. <gasps> that should do it. Just a little bit of extra clearance on the uh, the uh, inside of the hole there. That looks horrible. It's not centered at all. But that's where the holes are. That's all I can do. That's all I got. So I want to seal up the gap between the roller and the fiberglass so no moisture gets inside. Doing that with just some plain clear silicone here. And uh, once I get this installed, I'm going to hammer in the bolts and attach them from the other side. And silicone up the sides too, just to be safe. I don't want any leaks in there. I did get the bolts all the way in underneath, I just didn't get video of that. So I'm installing the anchor now, it has to be threaded through and the chain has to follow. A little bit of a pain, especially if it falls. Now this part right here is like a lock that holds the anchor in place. So I'm just marking that out and the exact same things before. Silicone, nuts, and bolts. And here we are actually on the water with my parents and grandparents over Thanksgiving. We dropped anchor and we grilled some burgers out on the water. First time testing out the anchor. And so I'm just kind of Feeling the water, see what works, see what doesn't. Uh, reverse, just starboard. Slow and steady, I'm just learning as I go. And since I don't have a windlass, I'll just wrap it around this Samson post up here. It's strong enough to hold the boat in place. Huh. Got it, Mr. T would know what to do with all that. And of course, everyone who checked into my live stream a couple of weeks ago knows that this anchor system is totally strong enough to hold the boat overnight with no issues against the current. It's perfect. And of course, pulling it up is an absolute pain. It takes every single muscle in your body, especially your back. So an electric windlass is a must. I did leave space for one in the future. That's just a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, and it's a lot of money. Like the cheapest reliable system you could get for a boat this size is going to cost you about $1,800 to $2,000 all in, including a battery and a whole electrical system for that. But it's it would totally be worth it because it would also allow me to drop the anchor myself from up top while controlling the boat instead of being on the bow and relying on someone else up top. I was able to drop it and do it solo by myself that night I camped on the boat, but it was a little bit iffy and not any fun. So this door is falling apart. All the hinges, the screws just fell out of their spots, so I disconnected the last screw that was holding it in and brought it inside. I'm drilling out the holes that were there because I'm going to plug them with some dowels coated in some wood glue. So we're just plugging up those holes to start fresh. And then I'm going to drill out those holes um, once it's all done and install new screws. But with the door, you can see the inside part looks fine, but the outside just looks horrible. Yeah, it needs to be redone completely on the outside. Uh, just decades of abuse and sun uh, has destroyed it. But I've never done anything like this. The most I know is from watching Travels with Jordy and Peter is great, but I don't have any hands-on experience, so I'm learning. So that's the carbide scraper, which does work, but... Man, that is a sound. So I moved on to sanding, which works, but it has its own problem, you may have noticed. Uh, it's just filled up with dust. This is gonna be gorgeous. Holy crap, this is some beautiful wood. I have no clue what species this is. If I had to guess, I'd say mahogany. It's got that dark red color and it's heavy as hell. 
I wish I knew more about it, but I am so glad that this is going to finally look as good as it actually is. So maybe, just maybe, sanding my main cabin door inside of my main cabin that might have been a mistake. There is so much dust everywhere. I didn't even touch that towel. That's all just dust. You can see the clouds flying away. That was a mistake. I'm not doing that again. But look at the door, it's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. I think this is actual mahogany. And if you were going to rebuild this door today, tracking down that much solid mahogany would be absolutely ridiculous. I'm going to sound like an idiot if it's not mahogany, but let's just pretend it is, okay? I'm going to let this coat of tongue oil dry for 24 hours because that's what it says to do, then do it again. And it should be looking good for a year or two to come. And then do it all over again. Uh, maybe not in my living room next time. And here it is five months later. It's been super reliable. The new screws inside of their dowel plugs have worked perfectly. Raw tongue oil is okay. It gives a really good finish, but it, it doesn't last very long, especially in the elements. Uh, but I'm, I'm willing to, to do it all again and learn from it next time and to get better as I go. So, yeah, pretty good. I, I like how these turned out. Um, and also here's some video of my grandparents playing some VR video games because I have nowhere else I can show that and I think it's really, really fun. Okay, Colin, what am I doing? Uh, is this it? <laughs> <laughs> it wants you to put some bacon and eggs on the griddle. How do you know that? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't see the food. No, keep coming. Keep all the way to That's the That's it. Good morning. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you enjoyed these. These are just two videos that almost got completely produced and then just for one reason or another they didn't. So it kind of fell through the cracks, but here they are right now. They've completed their life cycle. They are on my YouTube channel now and we can move on away from November because my last video was about November too, but now we're five months in the future. We need to be in the present. The summer is going to be incredible. This boat's gonna be on the water so much. We're gonna have all sorts of adventures. You've already seen some of the stuff we can do now that this boat is working, and I'm getting it cosmetically all fixed up, and it's gonna be so incredible. So stick around. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.